Hello, this video is to look at a question <clears throat> in section 411 about systems of linear equations and inequalities. And we're going to look at page 162, number 1. The question asks us to consider a music shop problem where Jake Garcia opens a music shop in which he will sell guitars and basses. He wants to find out the maximum amount of money he may have to borrow to purchase the instruments. So we are to write uh, a cost function in part A. It says each bass will cost him $900 and each guitar will cost him $750. He buys B basses and G guitars. Write an equation for the total number of dollars C he will have to spend. Okay, so for part A, we will be writing an equation, which will be our cost function. Okay, so if you think about this, he has to buy some bases, and B is his number of bases. and G is his number of guitars. And they also tell us that each bass is $900. So to buy B basses, he's going to pay 900 B. Right, if he buys one bass, he's gonna pay 900 times one. If he buys 10 basses, he's gonna pay 900 times 10 because each bass is $900. And each guitar is $750, so it's 750 times the number of guitars, which would be G. And this is our cost function, we'll call that C. Okay, so that's part A. Part A says to write an equation for the total number of dollars C that he will pay. Okay, then part B gives us some more information with the uh, I, double I, and triple I. Jake has certain restrictions on the number of each kind of instrument he can stock. His store is small, so he can buy no more than 50 instruments total. That means that the number of basses and guitars cannot be more than 50 instruments. So the number of basses plus the number of guitars has to be less than or equal to 50. Okay, that's I. And then double I says, well, because guitars are more popular than basses, the number of guitars must be at least twice the number of basses. Okay, so how do we translate? The number of guitars is at least, which is more than twice the number of basses, or greater than or equal to. At least means it could be equal to. If somebody says you have to be at least this tall to ride on the roller coaster, then you're that tall or more. So if you're if the number of guitars is at least twice the number of basses, it's that number or more. So it's greater than or equal to. Okay, and then what about triple I? Triple I says, to get started, he must buy at least 17 guitars. So the number of guitars is greater than or equal to 17. And at least five basses. So the number of basses is greater than or equal to five. Okay. Then it says, part C says, plot the graph of the system in part B. Okay, so in order to plot that graph, I'm going to move over to some graphing paper, which hopefully you can see here. I have already put on my scale. My scale is that I have um, on the x-axis, I'm putting the number of bases, and I've put a scale, but I'm counting by twos, two, four, six, eight, ten all the way up to, I've put up to 50 here. And I know that I don't need anything negative on these because um, this is a cost function, so we have to find out what is the cost. And then on my y-axis, I have put the number of guitars. Um, the only reason why I chose to do that was because a lot of these equations are written where G is something. So like this for me, when I go to graph this, this is Y is greater than or equal to 2X. So I'm actually going to call B my X coordinate and Y and G, sorry, my Y, yeah, Y coordinate. Okay, just so that I am clear on where I am on the coordinate axis. So of course I could rewrite this as 900 X plus 750 Y equals C. Okay, and then this is X plus Y is less than or equal to 50. Right? 
Okay, so in order to graph these, I would like to solve for y, right? Um, now this one, of course, is y is greater than or equal to 17. But this one, b, remember, is x. So this is really x is greater than or equal to 5. Okay, so part c tells us to graph what's in part b. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me, my first... Uh, graph is b plus g or x plus y is less than or equal to 50. Now of course to graph this I would like to solve for y so I get I'm going to subtract x so y is less than or equal to negative x plus 50. Right isn't that the same? b plus g is less than or equal to 50 which I'm translating to x plus y is less than or equal to 50 which now I can say if I solve for y y is less than or equal to negative x plus 50. Okay, and this is actually very easy to graph because if I am graphing y is less than or equal to negative x plus 50, I know that my y-intercept is 50, so I can put a point at 50, and my slope is m, right, is, is my negative 1 here. My slope is negative 1, so I'm going to go down 1 over 1. So from 50 on the y-axis, I can count my slope, down 1 over 1 down one over one, down one over one, and basically all of these points and so on. Okay, and then I can draw that in using a straight edge. And of course that should end up over here at 50 on my x-axis. Okay, so there we have the line y is less than or equal to 50, sorry, negative x plus 50. Now, of course, because it has a less than or equal to, we're talking about less than. So below here. Okay, my second line, <clears throat> excuse me, is y is greater than or equal to 2x. So where can I graph that? Y, we're graphing y is greater than or equal to 2x. Okay, well, my y-intercept is 0, and my slope is a positive 2. So I'm going to start here at 0. Now remember, each of these lines is 2. So if I go up 2 over 1, I could do that. But it's also okay to go up 2 over 1 like this. So I went up 4 over 2, up 4 over 2, right? Isn't that okay? Yeah, that's okay. So up 2 over 1, wherever I go up 2 over 1. Graph that. Okay, and draw that in. Okay. What's next? We have the equation uh, y is greater than 17 and x is greater than 5. Oh yeah, I, I believe I did forget to um, shade this. y is greater than 2x, right? So here's my line for 2x. So y is greater than 2x if I shade in here, okay? So I'm, I'm, right now I'm looking at this as being a potential solution. But now we have y is greater than 17 and x is greater than or equal to 5. So where's 17? So let's see, here's 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So here's 17. So y is greater than 17. So I need to be across here. So let me draw that in. So we're above this line. And x is greater than 5. So I have y is greater than or equal to 17, and x is greater than or equal to 5. Okay, these are two um, lines I'm going to graph here. So I should label this one y is greater than or equal to 2x, and this is y is greater than or equal to 17. And then here's 5 right here. Two, four, five. So draw that in. Okay, remember 
x is greater than this, so we're looking over here. Okay, so this is a little bit of a mess, but I think you can see that we're shaded, all of these functions are shaded in this space right here. Okay, but then <clears throat> we have plotted all part B, then it says part D, write an inequality stating that Jake spends at least $36,000, <clears> pardon me, on instruments. So now remember the first thing we wrote in part A, this was his cost function, right? And we're gonna use this, 900X plus 750Y equals C. Well, his if his cost is at least $36,000, we're gonna use that exact function, only we're gonna say 900X plus 750Y is greater than or equal to 36,000. This cost function is more than $36,000. Okay, so in order to graph this, because then it says to darken the feasible region in part C for which Jake spends at least $36,000, well, we're gonna have to solve this for Y, so we're gonna subtract 900X and divide by 750, and we end up with this function Y is greater than or equal to negative 6 fifths X plus 48. Okay, so do, do all the division and subtraction on that. And this is now the cost function for being greater than or equal to $36,000. Okay, so we can graph that. So here's our 48 right here. And we can go down six, two, four, six, and over five, two, four, five, there's a point. Down six, two, two, four, six, over five, two, four, five, and so on. Okay, and you might ask, well, how can I graph this more easily? We know the y-axis, the intercept is at 48. Where would it be on the x-axis? Well, if you want to know that, that's where y is 0. So what number here would be 48? Because negative 48 plus positive 48 is 0. And it would be a 40, right? Divide 5 into 40 is 8. 8 times 6 is 8. 48, sorry. So negative 48 plus 48 is 0. So that means on my x-axis, it's going to cross at 40. So I'm going to graph those points that I plotted and make sure they end up at 40 on the x-axis. Okay, and y is greater than or equal to that, so in here. Okay, now keeping in mind all of the things that we have conditions for, y is greater than or equal to negative 6 fifths x plus 48. So see this little space in here? This is where all of our conditions are met. And what we want to consider are the points of the max maximums here, 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 and here. I'm drawing them big if I can. Because all of the, we are less than this function, greater than this function, greater here, greater here, greater here, and all of them converge in here. Now, just to make this a little more easy to see, I have put these in my graphing calculator. So I'm going to turn that on. And this is something else. Let me clear that. But in y1, I have my negative 6 fifths x plus 48. I have y equals 2x, I have y equals 17, and I have y equals negative x plus 50. You'll notice that the one I don't have is x is greater than or equal to 5 because I really cannot put that into a graphing calculator where I have to solve for y. So all I have to keep in mind is that there's a vertical line here at x equals x is greater than or equal to 5 here and here. So now I kind of want to find out what are these points, okay? So this point right here is where x equals 5 and y equals this function here, which is negative 6 fifths x plus 48. Okay, and so what would this number be? Well, if I put a 5 in for x, divide by 5, I get a 1. Multiply by negative 6, I get negative 6. 48 plus negative 6 is 42. So we have a point at 5, 42. Then we have a point here, which is when x is 5, we have this function negative x plus 50. So if x is 5, negative 5 plus 50 is 45. 